Episode 9 on Parental Alienation. Any therapist working with parental alienation should be strong in the following areas. The attachment system and the dysfunction of the attachment system. For example, the bonding of the child to the alienating parent is an insecure attachment. A secure attachment is when the child is able to leave the mother's side and explore, go out and discover a relationship with the other parent. In parental alienation, a child cannot leave the mother's side and experience a relationship with the other parent. Not being able to do this, to be able to leave the mother's side, is an insecure attachment. Another element of the attachment system is what is known as protest behavior. Protest behavior is designed to elicit greater parental involvement. The reason for the child acting up is to elicit parental involvement. Here we have a child acting out to detach, to sever parental involvement. That is not normal. That's not how the brain works. The therapist also needs to be strong in narcissistic personality disorder and the co-narcissistic child. The therapist also needs to be strong in narcissistic and borderline personality dynamics that go into delusional beliefs under stress and how these false beliefs can be transferred to the child. This is things like enmeshment and parental emotional signaling, meaning the words attachment, um, attunement, and misattunement. Attunement and misattunement. A therapist needs to very much understand those terms. This is in reference to the child's position to socially reference parents for meaning, particularly, particularly in ambivalent situations. On this issue of attunement and misattunement, when the parent attunes to the child, the child's inner ex experience is amplified. When the parent misattunes to the child, the child's inner experience is suppressed. For example, when the alienating parent asks, how was the time with your dad? And the kid says, oh, great, wonderful. And then the alienating parent goes, oh, and gets all dejected. That's a misattuned response to the child's happiness, which will then suppress the child's experience of happiness. When the child says, oh, it was kind of boring, and the alienating parent responds, really? It was so boring? That's an attuned response to the child's criticism, which will amplify the child's criticism to the other parent. Okay, so that's how this process is transmitted. It is not through just overtly bad-mouthing the other parent. If a therapist is going to work with parental alienation, they have to understand how this stuff works. The therapist needs to understand triangulation and the cross generational coalition between the mother and the child against the dad. Psychologists can only provide help to children within the boundaries of their competency. And here I've listed the areas of strength required for the therapist. If the therapist validates the child's feelings that they are a victim, encouraging this delusional belief. Well, that is 
absolutely the wrong thing to do. Parental alienation represents a shared delusional belief, a false role that the child is a victim. Validating a patient's delusional beliefs represents incompetent therapy. And this brings harm to the child with the loss of the child's relationship with the other parent. And it exposes the therapist to a malpractice lawsuit from the other parent. You're not allowed to treat stuff that you don't know what you're doing. For example, in the hospital, if you go in with a problem with diabetes and instead of giving you insulin, they give you high blood pressure medicine and you die, that is a malpractice lawsuit. And in this case, if you don't treat the problem, it has great harm, the effects of great harm to the child in losing the relationship with the other parent. And that opens up the therapist to a malpractice lawsuit due to the great harm that their incompetency inflicted on the child.